Hey guys, Akil Mohuddin here, and welcome back to another video. So today, um, we're going to be going through the CPU project. Now, I don't know what this is, like part 6 of the CPU project? Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, in the last video, I think I told you guys that I wanted to do latch storage as the next part, so this way we already knew how to calculate bits with our ALU and we could add and subtract, but then I wanted to make it this way we could store bits, um, you know, for as long as we wanted as the next step. So when I was looking into how do you store bits, um, I figured out that you actually need a clock cycle for the flip-flops, right? And you're supposed to put all the flip-flops on the same clock cycle. And to do this, we don't have a clock. So we have to build a clock first. So this way we can get our storage working. And I figured this would be a great time to just go over clock. Um, you know, how we do our, how we're going to do our clock circuit. It's not a terribly um, difficult circuit to make. It's pretty simple. It involves a triple five chip, which is usually like the first chip that people use when they get into electronics, because it's like such a versatile chip and it's like pretty, pretty easy, right? It was actually the first circuit that I ever did, the five triple five circuit, to get an LED to flash. And this is actually the circuit right here, because this is the book that I use. It's just from like Radio Shack, right? And it like gave you a bunch of gave you a bunch of ICs and it would like give you circuit diagrams and it would tell you what the circuit does and ways you can like modify it going further, right? So this is the first circuit that I ever did and here is the circuit diagram for it. Right? Now I didn't have a four point seven K resistor, so I think I replaced that with a ten K and yeah, everything else I, I had. Um, it's not that big of a deal that I changed this resistor. It'll change the timing a little bit, but I'm not too worried about actually finding out what the gigahertz of this processor will, will, will be, so it's not that big of a deal to me. So let's just go over the circuit um, here. So you have the 555 chip, and this is just a standard circuit. So um, the, what we're doing in this circuit is we're having an LED flash on and off. So what, de what determines how fast the LED will flash is um, R2, um, well, it's actually R1 and R2 combined because they're in parallel, right? Because this involves right here how fast the capacitor will charge. Okay, so depending on how fast the capacitor charge is dependent on R1 and R2. So if you put higher resistance at R1 and R2, um, then the capacitor will sh will charge slower, and that'll make the LED flash um, slower, right? The other thing that changes um, how fast it's um, how fast you can make it go is by changing the actual size of the capacitor. So if say, um, it's actually going further, if you change the 10 microfarad capacitor to a 100 microfarad capacitor, we actually change the timing to 2 seconds or it, the flash rate to about once every 2 seconds. So that's what we change the flash rate to if we replace this with a 100 microfarad capacitor. So capacitance and the size of the capacitor and how fast um, the resistance before the capacitor depends, um, creates how um, how often the LED will flash on and off. And those basically mean the same thing, right? It's not just that, because if you have a larger capacitor, it'll take more time for it to charge to full, and then if you have higher resistance before the capacitor, then it'll take longer time for it to fill as well. So it's the same thing, you're just changing the amount of time it takes for the capacitor to fill up. Okay, and then the output of the 555 is the 3 is the third pin, which you can have go through an LED and then to an R3. So you can just go ahead and copy this circuit. I went ahead and copied it here on my page. Okay, but now the thing is, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a halt switch. Okay, so it'll automatically be flashing the output, right? But then if I press a button, I want it to stop. This way, like if the CPU is going through, um, it's like. Uh, execution and it messes up because it's definitely going to mess up something's gonna go wrong and I'm gonna have to be able to fix it so I want to be able to halt it and be able to kind of like stop the program where it is and kind of diagnose and look at how it's going through I was thinking about actually adding like a manual stop function meaning like I could press a button and every single time I press it would go through a step and press again to go through a step like that but I didn't do that as of right now I could always add it later um, so this is the whole clock that we're going to do. This is the entire circuit. So we have the 555 timer, which is this, which is this circuit that you saw here and here. This is this is what I call the 555 timer in this block that goes with a halt line through in a NAND gate. Now you could also do a NOT gate, 
right, right here, I did a NAND gate with one of the inputs go straight to voltage, which makes it just act exactly like a NOT gate if you make one of the inputs for the, for the NAND go straight to voltage, go straight to high, right? So I did that. So basically going through a NOT gate and then going through an AND gate with the 555 timer, which then goes to Y. So that means that if the 555 timer is 1 and the halt line is 0, the halt line goes to the NOT gate, becomes a 1, so it's 1, 1, output is 1. If 555 timer is 0, then output is 0. If the halt line, though, is 1, then it becomes 0 through the NOT gate, and then this output is now 0, so it stops the program or stops the execution, right? So now we can go ahead and take a look at this on on the breadboard. Can you guys see that? Okay. Um, okay. This is the ALU stuff, if you remember from the last video. So just pay attention to this section right here. So here's the halt switch. So now, right now, you can see how fast it's going. I don't actually know the speed of it, like I said. Um, but you can see that it's go ahead it's flashing right so now if I press this button it automatically stops right and then I let go and it keeps going again now the one thing that I was thinking of adding was the ability to like make it a make a momentary switch into a uh, lock position switch now I could do this with like a I don't know if I have one yeah, I don't have one. I don't have one on me but like you know switches that you switch it from on and off right like a little a little lever I could have that, but I could do it with a push button switch by having like um, by having a flip flop that automatically like resets and sets the value of one and zero of the switch every single time that I press the button. I could do that. It's a little bit more complicated of a circuit, and I just wasn't really feeling up to it at that point. I could always add it later. This is just mainly just something to get me up and running. This way, I can start working on our storage our storage unit, which is the main point of this which is the main point of why I made this clock circuit. So this is hopefully going to be a little bit shorter of a video because it's not that complicated of a circuit and there's not too much like theory or truth table to go through because you know it's mostly you know 555 is digital and analog right so really the clock is probably the most analog component of this entire CPU because 555 actually is a digital and analog chip it hasn't most people don't know this but a lot of people don't actually look at what makes up the IC, but in the 555, there is a there's a flip-flop on the inside of the 555. And the advantage of this is that most people think, oh, you know, you can achieve the same thing by just doing a capacitor, right? Like, that's, like, some people who don't really know, they say, oh, you can do the same thing with a capacitor, you know? Put a capacitor in, and every single time the capacitor charges and lets go of the voltage, um, the, uh, the LED will turn off. It will turn on, right? When the capacitor lets go of the voltage, the, the LED will flash on and then come back off while the capacitor is charging. And that's not really what's happening here. It's because it's saving the value. The 555 is saving the value of the previous uh, statement. So it'll stay off until the capacitor flashes on, and then it'll stay on for some amount of time and then turn off again. And it'll keep doing that. So it's not that it's just like, because if it was doing that, what you would see is actually a fading. It would slightly fade in and slightly fade out. But what you actually see here is a pure on and off, which tells you that there's something digital going on. And if you can actually look at the inside of 555, it's a pretty common thing to look at. You can probably just look it up online, 555 schematic. And it'll show you that there's a flip-flop on the inside that actually um, makes it a very discrete value of on and off for, t for timing. So that was kind of... Basically it. Uh, so hopefully in the future, by next week or so, I'll be able to build up the latch storage. The latch is going to be something that we have to, that we got to really talk about because it's a complicated, um, it's a little bit more of a complicated idea if you've never seen it before. And I know that because I was looking into it. So I hope you guys like this video. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel and, you know, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. The project's really coming along and by the time we get storage done, we'll... We'll really have, really have something uh, to show. So other than that, I'll just see you guys in the next one. Bye.